So, PCIe lanes. Why is this important, especially for creators? For example, this CPU has 24 Gen 5. This one has 20 Gen 5. This one has 128 Gen 4. And this one here has 112 Gen 5. So what's the generation difference? Why does one have more? Why is this important as a creator? Well, let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. What is PCIe Lanes? What does it stand for? PCIe stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express or PCI Express. Basically, it just means uh, a lane that allows you to expand the connectivity of your CPU. So think of it this way. First of all, let's talk about the generations, right? Think of this as, as this, that your, your CPU here is a type of a city or a, a big town, right? And then you've got all these other little things around that connect to your city CPU. Sometimes you have, you know, USB ports, you have LAN, you have SATA ports, you have M.2 slots for storage. Like you can have loads of these, lots of little, little squares. And they're, they're all important in your creator PC to connect to the CPU. You also have a GPU here, capture cards, you have audio cards and so on. You can keep going and going and going, but there's a limited amount of, you know, what you can add to this. So basically now each one of these has to transfer some data to the CPU, right? Some of them need a lot more, like GPU needs big, 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 big data, talking to the GPU, to the CPU to actually give you information, right? Then M.2 has a little bit of a smaller one. Then USB ports have a tiny, tiny little one. LAN ports the same, but some of these things need more, like some of the capture cards might need a little bit more, like, you know, perhaps more data come into it. So how do you actually measure all of this and connect all of these different stuff to the CPU, which actually communicates it all and then gives you the, you know, picture because this is the central process unit where all the data gets processed and then given you on the screen, right back on the screen so you can see what we're doing. What does PCI gen mean? Okay, as the generations go bigger, by the way, from one to two to two to three, three, four, four, five, right now the highest one is five at the time of me making this video. The generation means basically how much data can be pushed through individually through each of these gen lanes. So think of a lane as a highway, right? You've got a highway that connects to certain you know, part of the CPU. Let's say this is Gen 1, right? And this is CPU here. And you've got certain amount of cars that can travel the highway, okay? And they can collect each from data, some of it from the CPU and then deliver it to whatever, you know, peripheral you have this. Maybe this is a, a GPU, maybe this is a some kind of data, maybe this is whatever this is, right? It can be USB plug, anything. There is certain amount of data that can go through here. As we go to Gen 2, the highway actually doubles, which means that you can have double the amount of bandwidth, two cars traveling at the same time through this highway whether this is CPU, GPU, so on. PCIe Gen 3 doubled it again. So we have a little bit bigger. So we have now four cars. Then PCIe Gen 4 doubled it again. And Gen 5, which you have now, has doubled Gen 3. So each one of these generations has doubled the kind of data that can travel through the different lanes. And now the lane literally means how many of these does the CPU provide? So if we are looking the likes of Intel 12th gen or 13th gen, then they have 20 PCIe lanes, which means that they have 
20 of the whatever generation it supports that lanes the 12th and 13th gen both support pca gen 5 which means that it has you know let's say there's 8 there's 16 cars here supports 20 of these from cpu to different places on the motherboard we're going to talk about that in a minute when you look at the amd ryzen 7000 for example, then this supports 24 lanes. So it's actually more than this one here, but that all takes space also on the CPU. There is PCIe interconnects like a little part of the CPU. So you'll have to manufacture this. So having more PCIe lanes on your CPU makes it more expensive, which overall we're paying more for a CPU and potentially you don't need that performance because it also offers kind of expansion, not performance of the CPU, if you know what I mean. But there is also the competition aspect. AMD saying, look, we offer 24 lanes. Intel says 20 lanes, you know, 24 is better. Not necessarily all the time, but it does make sense. Then we can move on to this guy over here, which is AMD Threadripper. And this is the Threadripper Pro 5000 series. And all of these CPUs provide 128 lanes of PCIe Gen 4. Now, this is not Gen 5 yet. Um, this is like a last generation. This is PCIe Gen 4, but 128 of these is quite a few of these CPUs. And that's part of the reason why it's big. Obviously not all of it, but you have a lot more cores. You have a lot more going on on this CPU because you can connect different things. But then we also have this guy here, which is the Intel Xeon 3475X, which has 112, a little bit less than this guy, but they are Gen 5 lanes, which means that, as you see, Gen 5 is much bigger bandwidth, which means you can connect even more and bigger data going through these uh, PCI lanes. So now let's take a look at how does that work on the motherboards. Perhaps you've never realized this before, but if you look at the motherboards, I've got two motherboards here. One of them is like mainstream Intel Z700 series uh, motherboards here. This is Aero G Z790, okay? This one here is a workstation motherboard, and this is the for Intel Xeon uh, 3475X or all of the Sapphire Rapid Xeon platform, LGA 4677 socket. So here's how this works. You're gonna install your CPU somewhere on the socket there. So let's do that, right? Your CPU goes in. And now you start connecting different parts to the CPU. So what takes PCIe lanes in the motherboard? Number one thing, the main thing that takes PCIe lanes in your PC is the GPU. So whenever you install a GPU into your system here, which will have one there let's pretend we've just installed the gpu in there usually that first slot is an x16 slot which means that it's going to take 16 pcie lanes right so 16 of those cpu highways is routed to this first slot in here and it's the same on this motherboard the first slot has 16 lanes in this instance, it is PCIe Gen 5, right? But right now we don't have PCIe Gen 5 GPUs available. As far as I know, there's nothing, no peripheral that takes 16 lanes of PCIe Gen 5. If you have the likes of an RTX 4090, perhaps like this guy over here, and you plug it in here, which takes 16 PCIe Gen 4 lanes to connect this massive 4090 to the CPU to, you know, have enough data bandwidth to talk about the graphics and everything gets communicated to the CPU and back on the screen and so on. It takes 16 lanes. So now you're asking, wait a second, but that's PCIe Gen 5 and this is PCIe Gen 4. How does that work? Basically, the golden rule is that they're always backwards compatible, but not necessarily upwards compatible. So if we are taking a Gen 4 peripheral and we put it into a Gen 5 a highway that means that it's just got more space to travel on that highway and we're kind of wasting the space in there and perhaps some of the lanes they, they can run pca gen you know four and three and two whatever so the lanes are backwards compatible but if you take a pca gen uh, four card like this one that needs 16 lanes of pca gen four and you put it to the likes of 
10900K Intel CPU or Ryzen 2000, for example, or something like that, that doesn't offer Gen 4 PCA lanes, that means that suddenly this card now might be bottlenecked because on the highway, the 16 lanes of highway now where we can transfer data between the CPU and GPU is going to be smaller. So this needs Gen 4, but now it's Gen 3, which means that it's going to have to transfer all that data on those smaller highways, meaning that the actual data, there's going to be a delay transferring all that data. So if we look at back on this guy here, right? The lanes might be Gen 3 here, but we need 16 of these, then it's not going to be as fast transferring the data through these lanes. And that's where the PCI lanes go. Then you're saying, wait a second, so we used 16 of these PCI lanes on the first GPU slot. Where does the rest of it go? And what about the rest of it? There is M.2 PCI slots. If you know underneath here and underneath here, there is M.2 SSDs. Like this one over here. This is Kingston Fury Renegade one terabyte model. And if you want to install that underneath that heatsink, you pop it in there, then there is one slot that is directly connected to the CPU. And that's the rest of the Gen 4 lanes. They will go to the CPU. And then voila, all of the 20 lanes from the CPU have been used up. But then you're saying, but wait a second, that there's, there's more expansion slots? And then there is more M.2 slots? Where do these go? Then there's something called the chipset. On your motherboard, you'll have the CPU, but you also have something that's usually under a heatsink here called the chipset. And the better the chipset, the more power and bandwidth it has connect lots of different peripherals. You can think of it also as PCIe lanes where it has more PCIe lanes or more you know kind of highways to connect things into this chipset. So that's why the Z790 has a higher end chipset and you can connect more things into this one. Perhaps if you see some of the lower end whether we're talking about B760 or and H710 or something like that motherboards, then you see that it doesn't have as many IO or connectivity as some of the higher end boards because they have a better chipset. Basically how this works is there are certain lanes between the chipset and the CPU where the CPU is connected to the chipset and then the rest of this expansion gets connected to the chipset. And there is also obviously a, a bottleneck in here that it can't connect all of it directly to the CPU because the CPU doesn't have enough PCIe lanes. So that's why we have the chipset that handles some of the load kind of of the connectivity. But there is a caveat which is delay and latency because the data has to travel longer distance there is a delay for this. So for example, this expansion slot layer, this expansion slot here, and then these expansion slots on the actual motherboard there, they're connected to the chipset and that chipset provides kind of the PCIe bandwidth. And then from chipset, they get connected to the CPU. And you can see that there's going to be the bottleneck. And that's, that's the issue here with these mainstream CPUs that you have only 20 or 24, which means the rest of it has to go to the chipset. But then when we move on to the Threadripper Pros and Xeons, which we have in here, suddenly we are introduced into a whole new world of, look, we have loads of PCIe lanes and all data can travel freely. So when we are looking at this motherboard here now, then all of these guys are 16 slots, PCIe Gen 5 lanes, because the CPU has 112 of them, which means that all of these can be directly connected to the CPU, means there's no latency, there's no um, bottleneck of the, you know, highways to connect anything to the CPU. So what you can do and why these CPUs are there is you can take these high-end GPUs and slot them into these slots in there, Perhaps you have, you know, PCIe extension cables because obviously, as you can see, if you have something thick like this, this covers most of them. But now all of these GPUs can be directly connected to the CPU and you're not going to have any problems in expansion. You can take another GPU and, you know, plug it in there and then whatever. You have a 10 gigabit LAN, you plug it in there, as you can see there, you have a, a capture cards, you have audio cards, you have video decoders, encoders, 
anything you want you can plug in there and you're not going to have any of these these bottlenecks and that's why these threat rippers and Xeon CPUs take it to a whole new level of PCA expansion what you can do you can build yourself a workstation and you don't need to worry about how many GPUs you're gonna um, you know put in there and if I'm gonna be bottlenecked by the GPU or if my platform actually bottlenecks the GPU because the GPU doesn't have enough you know big lanes highways to talk to the CPU and actually you know chew through all of this data that needs to come to the GPU back to the CPU and then on the screen and then goes through the RAM and everywhere because there's lots of data that we're working with and that's why the PCI lanes for creators is very interesting things that we should keep an eye on because as creators we're the ones who need actually multiple GPUs we need perhaps capture cards we need audio cards we need 10 gigabit LAN when you start to add all these things together very soon you start to realize I kind of need more than 20 PCI lanes but not necessarily there's possibilities other ways as well that's why these high-end Threadripper systems are very very beneficial if you are for example 3d renderer if you need a lot of graphics power or m.2 pca storage you know you only have what five slots in there but then you can have pca m.2 expansion cards like these ones that take four of the you know pca gen 4 storage and you can slot them in here look it's only one slot deep you can put one two three four five six seven of these and these have four slots each. In the future, we're gonna have uh, these, but Gen 5 coming out as well. Imagine Gen 5 PCA storage, four of these on each, and then there's seven slots. We have 28 slots of PCA Gen 5 M.2 storage, plus another three that is provided by the chipset, which is in here. There's still a chipset even on the higher ones that provides some of this one and connectivity to the other ones and I.O. and things. The chipset is still very important and gets connected to the CPU for extra I and so on. But the PCI lanes is a very important thing. So let me know if you still have questions about PCI lanes. What does it mean? How does it work? Why do we need more of them? What about different generations? But hopefully this video answered all of your questions and why do you need them as a creator? But if you are a creator and you want to build yourself the best bank for book creator PC, then check out the video guides in the description below. There's four videos there. Whatever your budget is, I've created these so that any budget can go. Just find those videos there and I'll explain everything down there. Thanks guys for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.